Good morning. Not you, Cooper, all the people watching. <laughs> How you doing? This is Craig from Liberty Bell Beekeepers. Just finished up this custom hive that I've been building over the last couple weeks. I wanted to give you guys kind of a sneak preview before uh, it gets filled up with bees and we never see the inside of it again, or at least not in this capacity. So I've been doing a lot of research about new ideas uh, for hives. Traditional Langstroth equipment is used uh, pretty standardly across the, the globe, although there's quite a few other styles and systems of hives that work perfectly well. Uh, the Langstroth system seems to be the most user-friendly when it comes to beekeeping uh, for people that are collecting honey and resources, and the bees seem to do just fine in them, although they do have their drawbacks as does anything. But with bees in particular, they run into so many situations in the wild that uh, they survive and thrive in that pretty much anything you keep them in, they're gonna do, they're gonna do well um, under most circumstances. Of course, bees die all the time. That's just part of life. Uh, regardless of mites or disease, they, re, uh, they, they come across a, a myriad of hardships. Um, us as beekeepers do our best to try to Eliminate them if we can so we can uh, not only get to enjoy the bees themselves, but also get some of their resources uh, like honey and wax as well as propolis. So I've been working on this hive body um, and thinking about it for about six months and decided to throw it together. Now I get personally, this is my shop, you can see it's pretty spacious. I have all the tools necessary to build anything really. Um, when it comes to bees. I build most of my boxes. Um, I don't build frames just because it's not practical time-wise uh, for me. Um, but all my boxes, lids, uh, covers, all that stuff I, I make myself because I'm perfectly capable. Not everybody is and that's fine. And you don't have to be when it comes to beekeeping. There's some really, really easy ways to keep bees uh, using reclaimed material. Um, that you can be very successful and have a boatload of fun with your bees. And it's kind of cool seeing the kind of things that people keep bees in uh, across the world uh, and to see them sur survive and thrive in these, these different uh, orientations of, of um, uh, shelter is, is pretty interesting to watch. I always come back to a guy in Texas who had some in a parking cone. They showed up in there as a swarm and he kind of left them go for several months and uh, they did just fine. Um, so it doesn't have to be anything pretty or elaborate or expensive for you to have a good time in beekeeping. Now me personally, I like to build stuff and be creative. So I went ahead and started building this, this box here. Uh, what this box is, is pallet material. This is mostly oak uh, and some southern yellow pine. I get big skid pallets from uh, my na next door neighbor here is a sheet metal worker. They build duct work for HVAC systems. Um, so I get a lot of that material for absolutely nothing and it's basically delivered to my door. Now that's not the case for everybody, but there are some really easy sources for free material like pallets. Uh, you just want to be careful with pallets. Not all of them are created equally. Uh, they all should have a stamp on them somewhere. On that stamp is a code that tells you the nature of that pallet. Some pallets um, are treated with pesticide to keep uh, invasive species from being transferred around the, the globe. Um, us here in Pennsylvania, we're dealing with the spotted, spotted lanternfly um, that's kind of sweeping down across the state. Who knows how that's gonna affect long-term, but as of right now, um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure what the, the current research says. Uh, back to the pallets. So we want to take a look at those pallets and make sure that they are labeled properly and they haven't been treated with chemicals. Um, on the labeling stamp, you'll find a, a couple of letters, either HT or uh, MB. HT means heat treated, it means the, the pallet was heat treated to kill any parasites or, or uh, species on it. Um, the MB is the one you got to be worried about. That's the one with the pesticides, methyl bromide, uh, which is a nasty substance. You don't want anything to do with it. You don't want to use this stuff for your gardens or your, your craft projects or any of that kind of stuff because it is just nasty, dangerous stuff. 
So I know all these pallets are clean. Uh, I know the source. They're not treated at all. Um, so I decided to use them for my hive body. Now this is the two types of material that I have been, been using. Uh, like I said, most of this thing, this box is oak. This is a piece of oak here, and you can see on, on the plain side, a side that I planed flat and smooth, you can see the grain in this. Uh, it's real tight, very dense, uh, a nice good hard wood. That's why it's used for flooring and stairs and railings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it does have a nice look. This has a nice, um, a nice bit of red in it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the species of oak, but I do know that it's oak. And as I guess, like I said, you can see all the the tightness of the grain. Now this is a piece of southern yellow pine and immediately as soon as you stick them next to one another you can see the difference. The, the pine is a much softer wood. It's not nearly as dense uh, in its rays and um, therefore it's not quite the same and not used the same as, as an oak would be used. Um, but I did use both of these because I do come across both of these materials um, in my travels and they both work great for whatever you're using it for general purpose um, once again just make sure that they haven't been treated with any pesticides the, the lid here is as you can see it's got this green vinyl coating on it if you've seen any of my other videos you know my fondness for billboard vinyl this vinyl is available for absolutely nothing I can get it by the pallet from um, for me it's clear channel outdoors is the closest place uh, and they literally have thousands and thousands of square feet probably thousands of square miles worth of this stuff out there and they're giving it to you for free it works great for tarps for drop cloths I've made shopping bags out of it beach bags um, um, uh, just general tarps to tarp over an area to get some shade uh, I also use it for all of my hives to cover all my lids. Um, you can get uh, aluminum or metal sheet metal and that can get expensive. I can get a 30 foot by 70 foot sheet of this for absolutely nothing and it'll cover every single one of my hives that I needed it to and I'll still have some left over. Uh, it's great, it's free, it's paintable. Um, it, it just really works. You might be able to see behind me here, this is a paint booth that I built, just a very crude paint booth and I wrapped it in that billboard vinyl and it works fantastic for keeping a space like this, keeping an area that's warm that I can use for, for paint so it can dry properly and curing resins and things like that. So, the lid was initially made with two inch insulation foam. I use this foam on top of my colonies during winter, uh, underneath the lid, above the top um, shim board, which is uh, used for, my, my shim boards are used as an upper entrance as well as emergency feeding if I need it, but uh, I just took a sheet of this, cut a couple of pieces. Now this I got for scrap, from scraps from my job in construction. Uh, a sheet of this is somewhere I think in the $40 range, a four by eight sheet. Um, and this is one of the few materials that I had to purchase um, in order to make this hive and, and to, to winter, my, winter my bees. So I basically cut two pieces of it, 15 degree angle in the middle, so it's got a nice pitch. Everything rolls off of it. It was glued together. And I wrapped the underside with just a Luan and underlayment material, an eighth inch plywood um, in the center. I had some reclaimed floorboards, some one by, eight, one by 12s that I ripped down to make the frame, connected it all together, and now I have a nice, durable, very lightweight, I mean, this thing weighs a couple of pounds, um, and well insulated lid for, for my hive body. This frame, like I said, is a deep, is a deep box. It's a basically a 12 by 24 by 24. There's a rough dimensions, it's not quite that, but um, as you can see, a need for a deep frame um, for this box, similar to uh, a Layens Hive. Here is uh, an extra frame that I built. This is, like I said, five frames, but I built a sixth frame because I kind of thought that at some point I might need an extra, and I figured it'd be a good idea to build one. Um, 
It's all pine. Made the end bars and top bars. Made this all myself. Um, inserted about a one and a half inch uh, starter strip to help keep it keep them building straight in the frame without doing any cross combing. Also have some three eighths dowels, and I coated them all with a little bit of beeswax um, to help hold the, the strip in, but also to inspire building um, for the bees. Pretty cool. It is a five frame, like I said. I'm gonna pull the frames out. I'll give you a closer look at the body itself. This was all joined together with dowels. Dowels and also screws. Um, as you can see, all this material is basically a true two by four. It's all at least two inches thick. Uh, some a little bit thicker than others, and I kind of left it rolling and uneven just because I liked the way it looked. I did glue it all together with tight bond three. Tight bond two and three are formaldehyde free and safe for indirect food contact. So you can use them in your, in your hives and in your frames or whatever uh, without any worry. Um, it is also an interior exterior glue, so it should serve my purpose as well. I'm still debating on whether or not I'm going to coat this with something light, uh, maybe oil it just to kind of give it a layer of protection. Um, but most of these pallets are pretty weathered, and uh, I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen with, excuse me, with them um, as it's out in the weather. But some of it's cracked, some of it's split, and I don't care about any of that. Uh, it's pretty solid material, even with the cracks and splits. And like I said, I just kind of like the look of it. So I built these four, four panels, cut them down to the appropriate size. This is a seven and a half inch wide um, cavity, basically like a five frame nuke would be. Um, and it's a double deep frame, meaning it's essentially about the same size as a double deep uh, hive body would be. Um, equivalent to 10 deep frames, although it's five and it's two stories. I got a plywood bottom, as you can see, and on the front edge, I did uh, cut a three quarter inch, um, a three quarter inch clean out, basically, just trying to give them an area where they can they can push out their dead and and do a little bit of cleanliness uh, with the hive and some and some uh, housekeeping. I am going to cover that with uh, some half inch screened as a mouse guard, but for right now it's being inside. Uh, I haven't done any of that yet. Uh, I also did have to fill some holes with some dowels, but hey, it is what it is. Free material is free material. Um, usually with all my traps and all my boxes, I rub the inside with beeswax, just get a block and kind of scrape the sides. Um, just helps to make the bees more comfortable, gives it that bee smell. Uh, I did wrap the outside with copper strapping. That's, I think, the only thing I had to purchase, and that was really purchased a long time ago for another project, and I just had some left over. But I think it kind of gave it a cool look, too, and it'll be neat once, this, once that starts to patina and uh, green up and, and, and weather. Uh, I think this thing's going to look kind of cool, if, uh, if, if for nothing else. Along, excuse me, along with the uh, bottom entrance, I did drill a three-quarter inch top entrance which when the frames are in the box, uh, it's a little bit tight. So if I push, if I push my frames towards the front, it'll eliminate that front entrance. But I think I'm going to, you know, keep the frames towards the back and give them that space to, to use that. I'm going to monitor it and kind of see what it, see what it does as we go along. Uh, the main entrance is a one inch hole drilled in. And this material is like two and a quarter inches. So it gives them a nice tunnel to, uses their entrance, which they can easily defend. Um, I put it up on a couple of, well, a couple, I put it up on legs so that I could work with it standing up without having to bend over and uh, put any more unnecessary strain on my back. Um, I did put adjustable, adjustable pegs on the bottom 
so I can level it once it's up on the roof. Um, and once again, I think I am going to going to kind of coat this the, the legs at least and and some of the the top surfaces with something to just uh, try to help eliminate any water damage from from rain and and weather. And that's that's pretty much it with this uh, with this box. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to getting it out into the apiary and seeing what shows up in it. My uh, intention is not to place bees in this, but to use it as a swarm catcher, uh, see what bees are, show up in it, and monitor their pro monitor their progress and pull swarms from them. Um, and leave this to be as hands-off as possible. Now, I'm a licensed beekeeper, and here in the state of Pennsylvania, you need to be inspected if you plan on doing any kind of sales, um, which I did a few last year, and we'll see what this year brings uh, as far as selling any bees. Um, I'm not quite sure, not quite sure how that all is gonna work yet for this year, but I'm looking forward to an exciting new year of beekeeping. Last year was my first year. I did about almost two years of research before I even got bees. Um, I worked this summer with another guy, went in his hives quite a few times, and I can't recommend doing that enough. Some people jump into beekeeping not having really any idea of what it's like. The best thing you can do is get out there and do as much research and constantly research because it's always changing. There's so much out there between funded research and anecdotal research and just hobby beekeeping research, um, you'd be a fool not to constantly keep learning. Uh, it's very frustrating um, to see people struggle. And I think a lot of it has to do with, with not really taking the time before they jump in to get really familiar with how this all works and figure out what it is you want to do with your bees. It's so important, in my opinion, to, to Figure out what you want to do. You just want to be a hobby beekeeper? Great. There's, there's ways to do that that are very cheap and easy and fun and stress-free. Uh, if you're looking to make money with bees, now you're, you're talking about a different style, maybe a different setup. Um, honey, wax, all that stuff's great to have, and it can make you some extra money, or it, can be your, your, it could be your livelihood. But you need to make sure that you want to, uh, to get into that and I suggest that you research that heavily before you do so and come up with a game plan as to what you're going to do and what you want to do with your bees um, because it can really, it, it'll dictate to you what you're going to spend, how much time you're going to use. Um, lots, there's lots of things involved with beekeeping. Um, it can be very simple and very fun or it can be as, as technical as you want to make it. You have to decide how you're going to do that. Me personally, I'm in it too. Make a little bit of money, make, get some honey, sell some honey. I love rendering wax. I love building uh, hive bodies and boxes. And I sell a decent amount of equipment as well. Um, I'm also looking to sell bees uh, if I can. I do a treatment-free style of beekeeping. I don't use any treatments for mites. Um, I don't believe treatment is the way to go in order to ensure survival for the bees or to help them become a stronger asset. Um, the mites kind of showed up in the late 70s, early 80s, and ever since it's been throw everything, everything we can at them as far as chemicals and naturals, organic oils, all kind of things. And the mites are still here. They're not going anywhere. Um, but it's my opinion that uh, Trying to create a situation that's unrealistic, you know, with treatments is uh, not the way to, to be successful in helping the bees get stronger. Um, apart from that, have some fun with your bees. Have some fun with the, all the, the things about beekeeping that are fun. I mean, they're beautiful, interesting creatures to begin with, and and once you get in there and get close and and really pay attention, you'll be really happy that you got involved because it's just a lot of fun. Now there's my custom hive. That'll do it for me today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. As always, you can take a look at us on social media. Uh, you can take a look at our other videos here on YouTube. And uh, enjoy your bees.